All right, Culture Dog Sam Hatch back with another video, one I wasn't intending on doing anytime soon. Yes, a Laserdisc update video. A Laserdisc player update video in particular. And uh, last uh, one I had shown you my uh, Panasonic and my newest uh, Pioneer. And uh, lo and behold, I just uh, tripped across the collection of uh, Laserdiscs I just showed in my other video. And... Uh, it came with a player, and this is a player that uh, is not necessarily recommended because it is a Sony, and everybody in the Laserdisc world is uh, usually a detractor of Sony players. But me being a, not an apologist, but at least someone who uh, can appreciate them on some level because my first player was an MDP-333, uh, I kind of have a soft spot for these suckers, and this is a decent, you know, early digital double side player, the MDP 800. So, um, like maybe around 1993 or so. So not quite AC3 territory, though it does have a Toslink digital output, so you can do, um, you know, the PCM digital track and also rock the uh, the uh, DTS discs if you have any of those so yeah this thing was uh, you know somebody's uh, baby back in the day and these things cost well over a thousand dollars when they first came out and uh, the only disc, uh, players I have that are not from the original owners or me being the original owner are my two uh, CLD D704s every one uh, other one I have is from the original uh, procurer of it but uh yeah let's check this sucker out it's uh got a cool green light there it does sound clunky the tray does but it's actually pretty quiet when it's playing yeah that's one thing about pioneer players they're pretty noisy and uh, my panasonic is way uh way quiet so we got this uh, quick start thing here, and it's kind of awkward. It doesn't really explain it well in the manual, which uh, I do have as well. It came with the uh, the remote and the uh, original manual, though they did tape it to the the top of the player, so it's. Uh, kind of torn up there. It was also known as the MDP A7, I believe in Japan, but it's a thick monstrous booklet, so it's got half of it in, you know, English and then again in Japanese. So anyways, yeah, you got the um got the quick start there and um it yeah, it's kind of ill-defined. It apparently doesn't read as much of the table of contents, so if you slap a disc in it just kind of gets up and running. And it doesn't read all the individual, you know, tracks on the top and bottom. Yeah, kind of, it's similar to my uh, 333, but instead, yeah, they decided to, oh, there's a CDV in the middle. Um, it's got LD and CD and then side A on the top and then side B on the bottom. And each side has its, you know, track listings up to 20 instead of the big kind of grid that my 333 has. Uh, it says in the manual that if you choose not to use the quick start and deselect it, that it will remember that uh, even if you power off the player. And it's only when you uh, unplug it that it loses that. However, uh, every time I turn it off and turn it back on, it's it's on there. <laughs> so I don't know. The floor display uh, button also does the usual uh, turning off of the whole... Uh, LED display there, and there's a little digital memory indicator. It's not actually a button, it's just a little light that lets you know when uh, the digital memory uh, kind of activates and en engages. And every time you change uh, a chapter, it engages and st kind of stores an image. So, like my 704, it'll store an image for when you flip sides or when you, or when you want to do anything else. You can even store an image and uh, watch you know, something else, or put a CD in and listen to it and have that image going. Um, 
The digital memory is, you know, not the best. It's not going to capture a crystal clear image, but it's pretty cool to have. It's not quite as comparable as pausing a CAV disc. And in fact, I think there's an override you have to use when you are playing CAV discs on this, because it'll automatically just capture whatever you're playing with the digital memory. And I think you have to tell it, hey, hey, knucklehead, I've actually got a standard play disc in here, uh, so you don't need the digital memory. Um, so yeah, it's got a, a still mode here, which is that same uh, feature that's going to capture the image and, and keep that going. And uh, picture call, I think, is, uh, if I can remember correctly, it goes back to whatever you've saved in the in the memory. And it's got the headphone jack there. It is quietly a uh, karaoke player. It doesn't really announce that as loudly as most, so it's got the whole echo and uh, mic level section here and a mic input. And... Uh, Pretty simple uh, play button set emits to side A and side B, um, and then pause and, and stop. And uh, instead of skip or whatever, it's like I don't know, auto chapter search or auto monkey search. I forgot why they call it you know, that instead of skip. I guess somebody copyrighted the word skip. But uh, And then the, the scan, aka fast forward and rewind. Um, but yeah, it's it's... You know, kind of a sexy player. That's the one thing. Sony's are... They're tasty little players. And uh, maybe not in terms of picture quality, but sound quality, they're always very good. Um, but compared to Pioneers, Pioneers you know, can be a little homely unless you have the sweet, you know, Arushi finish and etc. Um, so yeah, let's check out the backside of this puppy. Pardon the jungle of wires here, uh, but much like the Pioneers, it's got two sets of lineouts. Lineout 1, lineout 2, um, and then for audio, and then there's um, and then the yellow uh, composite video. And then there's also two separate S video outs here. And uh, I'm actually looking at the optical because apparently somebody took out the uh, cap there. But that's the toss link. And there is an attenuator switch, which they don't tell you is actually for the uh, karaoke function. If you're getting a lot of like sibilance or something like that, you can turn the attenuator on. And uh, then there's a control in. So if you have, I don't know, a bunch of Sony products or whatever, you can use your, your laser disc player with your TV, etc. So we'll uh, test the sucker out. It is brighter on the S video output. So I did notice that when I switched over to uh, composite that it got a little bit darker and more what I was used to. And let's fire up the old... The tray is uh, a little bit different than the uh, ones in my other deck. And it is pretty cool that it has the the drawer that you know pops out and then the cover slides down as opposed to having to be pushed down because for some reason that design never really worked and the drawer had to have really quality uh you know torque going and if the motor ever got you know, gunked up or god forbid a hair got caught around something it just uh it just stopped opening the door <laughs> altogether and just made a horrible grinding noise so at least they they wanted to have some sort of cool door effect but they managed to work something out um so yeah, so the uh, composite, not too bad. It has that same look that my, you know, 333 has. Everyone in that calls it a grainy look. And, and kind of what it is, is the Sony uh, discs, um, or the Sony players, tend to have a lot of chroma noise. And, and most players have chroma noise in, in the reds and the purples. And uh, Sony's tend to have, like, noise across the board. <laughs> so you get, you get a lot of uh, nasty stuff there. So yeah, let me throw in my uh, classic... Uh, Mitsubishi, not going to get sued by Lucasfilm desk, and get that going. But yeah, it's a pretty elegant little uh, setup there. And uh, let's fire up the remote of Doom. Oh yeah. I just realized this is one sided, so I'm not gonna be able to do a a side flip, but you'll have to trust me that it works. 
Alright, I showed this one in another video. Let's do automatic monkey search and get something else going down. Ooh, it's time for some cuisine. Um, so yeah, most of the stuff on here is pretty similar to anything you'd find on a Pioneer or whatever. It's got, um, I'm not sure what the one side all thing is, but it's got a shuffle and everything for the CD. Audio monitor to go between left and right and, um, Stereo analog to jump over to the analog. Uh, the picture enhance gives you a couple different options sharp, soft, and standard. Sharp apparently gives you like a 2 megahertz boost in the, the kind of mid section of the frequencies, and uh, I haven't noticed any other major ringing effects. So, but I've left it on standard so far and uh, there's also a stop motion feature here and um, whenever you hit play it kind of goes back so anytime you want to kind of capture the image uh, that's the flash which turns into more of a slideshow What else has it got? Uh, typical display functions. Um, some sort of memory play thing. Uh, the flash motion, stop motion, auto pause, intro. Da, 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 da. Doesn't have a cool light up feature like the CLD D704, but it does have a little light there for the jog shuttle, which does work pretty well. It's a pretty beefy remote, too. Uh, kind of like the Panasonic for the uh, LX900. But luckily, they have the, the power labeled nice and green, so you know what to do. But I've been watching quite a few discs on it, and it works just fine. So, uh, if you are a Sony hater, carry on with the Sony hate, but I understand there's a certain level of expectations that needs to be met, and, you know, as long as the player's in decent working order, I think it totally will meet the needs of uh, quite a few, you know, people just getting into the the format. I know like price is an issue, you know, for what people want for these sometimes is far more than what you could pay or you know for a pioneer or you'd be better off spending that exact same amount of money on a pioneer and getting better performance. So I kinda understand that, but if one sent you know, one falls in your lap or something like that, I wouldn't, you know, take it out back and beat it with a stick or anything like that. So show some Sony some love, even though they have, you know, low picture quality and <laughs> tend to break down after some time. Oh, I gotta go play some basketball. I'll see you guys later. So yeah, my seventh player, Sony MDP-800. It may be the last one for a while, we'll see. Who knows what other kind of shenanigans I'll get to in the future. So I hope you guys had fun. Time to stop this sucker. Call today, and uh, I'll be doing some more uh, laser disc spotlight reviews and all that sort of good stuff. So stick around and uh, cheers to everybody, especially all the new people I've been talking to recently, new subscribers and everything like that. So 
uh, I will continue to uh, work on the Laserdisc content as well as some other cool things, hopefully. We'll talk to you soon. Cheers.